Hi there. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Nice of you to join. Just in time or not. Just in not, time. Not in time. No, I always like to say always late but worth the wait. My husband doesn't uh, after like the 50 minutes time, my husband doesn't find it funny anymore. <laughs> I don't know if I'm worth the wait, but um I will be late consistently, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. I'd be late to my own funeral. I can't be on time for anything to fucking save my life because I've got an overambitious schedule. Actually, the first gift my husband ever bought me was a watch. <laughs> we were only together for a month. I mean, that's not a bad gift. I take it's not a bad gift, no, but it was like a passive aggressive hint that I need to get my <laughs> shit together and turn up to stuff on time. It hasn't yeah. worked. Um okay. I'm not gonna do too much of the talking because James has actually prepared a beautiful presentation. I don't know if you've got that you're going to use both of them or combine or go with the first one i'm but just I'm going to use one i'm going to use the the kind of bfcm resources talk track packages tactics uh, beautiful slides and um i'm also because i often um don't get the chance to spend that much time with so many partners i'm i'm i would also encourage you to just shout out and ask questions of me and tell me things that you don't like about Clavio and the partner program and things that we can do better um, because it's pretty rare to get so many people in a room that maybe have or haven't experienced the Clavio partner program but probably have some feedback on things that I'm about to, to present or just us in general so um, if you would like to to um, call me out on something then please do okay when do you want me to start, Rachel? Should we get started like ASAP? I feel like you've already started, but for those who don't know, James is from Clavio. <laughs> James is actually from Clavio. Um, some there's a mix of people in the group here. Some of them are US or international. It's an international group, so they might not know who you are. But cool. James is from Clavio. I've worked with James for a while from the partnership side. Um, and obviously, uh, Clavio, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, this quarter, a lot of agencies doing the code freeze, and there's a big push on the performance marketing side. Clavio is a big part of that. So I asked James if he would come in and share some of the strategies and recommendations that they're making with their brands, um, with their partner managers or CAMs through their agencies in the run-up to the sales season. Um, so James pulled it all together and said he would share it all with us here. Um, so I know that most of the people in the group, I don't know 100%, but a lot of the people in the group, to my knowledge, are doing email or Clavio specifically. So hopefully there'll be some good insights there and any questions, like James said, just throw them in. Awesome. Rachel, nice thank you very you. much for the intro and inviting inviting us, of course. Um, one one thing just on that, can I do a show of hands, use like the Google hand, raise hand thing. If you as like if you know Clavio, you use Clavio, you do Clavio services, just so I make sure I know like anyone that's not. It looks like pretty much everyone is, which is good. Okay, few few people not, but maybe they're also not not here right now or not found the hand. Okay, awesome. Um, I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna share my screen. Remember with Google Hangouts, I cannot see you. So if you, um, yeah, if you would like to say something, have a question, just unmute and shout at me and I will stop talking and probably go, excuse me, can you ask that again? Uh, can you see on the screen the slideshow? Can someone shout yes or no? Yes. Yes. Okay, cool. So um, my name's James. I am the Director of Partnerships here in EMEA. Um, Clavio Partnerships means a few things to different people. Uh, for this group, it's predominantly agency partnerships. Um, so SIs, marketing agencies, uh, but we're also looking after technology partners, uh, platform partners as well across EMEA. So there's a relatively large uh, scope to what we cover across the EMEA team, but we're going to focus mostly on agency related content today. I'm going to talk about a few things. Um, so number one, the resources that we offer to our agency partners through our partner program, partner portal, um, some customer talk tracks. Uh, around BFCM, some ways to package and price 
uh, around BFCM. So it's definitely still not too late to be offering some pricing and packaging for um, marketing around BFCM. And then specific tactics that you can recommend, talk through, package up for customers. Um, there's about 30 slides. So I'm gonna try and keep this to like 30 to 40 minutes if I can. Um, obviously questions will make that longer um, or we'll keep, que keep questions to the end. I personally prefer people to just jump in and ask questions. Uh, I will be sharing the deck afterwards. So don't feel like you need to take loads of notes if you don't want to. There are lots of notes on the deck, like on the pages. Um, so I'm not just gonna talk through them all. I'm gonna try and like talk through the highlights uh, someone just pinged something. Did they? I don't know. He's been invited. There you go. Um, I'm just going to talk through the highlights and then, um, yeah, like I said, ask questions. The notes will be there for you afterwards. Any questions before we start? No. Assume that's a no. All right. So um, if you have access uh, to the partner portal, um, and if you're familiar with Clavio, there's a couple of ways that you can get resources. The first one is at the bottom of uh, this page. It's clavio.com events forward slash, slash live trainings. These are run by our customer education team. And there is a pretty healthy calendar. This is not an up-to-date calendar on the right, bottom right-hand side. There's a couple of sessions nearly per day at the moment on different um, strategies around email and SMS from Clavio. So customer education is driving the majority of the kind of like content on a daily, weekly basis. And then in the partner portal, you have access to a whole bunch of other content. A couple of highlights. So we've got the Conquer Cyber Weekend strategy um, sessions, which are going to be running through October. And these are broken down by segment. So enterprise, uh, sorry, entrepreneur, which is our smaller merchants, um, upper SMB, uh, an SMB, so uh, like merchants between one and 20 million, and then mid market plus, so specific strategies for 20 million plus businesses. We're also running Cyber Weekend offer and promotion strategies, um, again, split out by segment, uh, building your Cyber Weekend audiences, again, broken out by segment. These um, sessions cover like specific customer use cases, some case studies. Uh, you get questions from merchants, then they're, they're partly attended by partners, but they're also attended by, by our customers as well. So you get to hear from the customer um, perspective. I definitely encourage people, especially if you're new to Clavio or you're thinking about Clavio services or you're new to Clavio services, to join some of these sessions just to get a feel for the types of questions that customers actually ask of experts or like Clavio experts. Um, in the partner portal, um, which you should all have access to if you're a Clavio partner, um, for anyone that's not sure how to access it or looking to access it, if you're new, you need to sign up as a partner. So clavio.com forward slash partners, you can sign up there. If you are, if you are a partner and you've forgotten or struggling to access your partner portal, just drop a, just write partner portal in the, in the chat and I'll come back to you later. Rachel might even be able to send you a link. Rachel, I think you have access to the partner portal. She might even be able to send someone a link to the partner portal while I'm talking. Um, we've got a new Black Friday Cyber Monday playbook. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of academy courses that you and your teams can go through to make sure you have a really great understanding of like what's involved in Black Cyber, uh, Black Friday Cyber Monday um, planning and execution from a services point of view. Um, that's content. I'm going to touch on like some of the content further down, like towards the end of this, where I talk about the calendar and some of the specific tactics that you can use when, when working with customers. Um, but the content like at large is, is housed between those customer education sessions and, uh, the partner portal. So when we think about Black Friday and Cyber Monday, there's a couple of key talk tracks to leverage with customers. Uh, and what we mean by talk tracks, obviously, is, is like, what are the specific plays or ways to approach uh, Black Friday and Cyber Monday um, that you can take with a customer? Um, 
number one, it's not just the cyber five. It's not five days of the week. It's actually the whole month. Uh, and you can see here um, the distribution uh, of sales across the different parts of the of the of the month. Um, and you can also see the the holiday season growth uh, year on year as well. So I think it's important to recognize that this is not about one day or one week. It's important to recognize that this is about a whole month. So rather than like in yesteryear when you might just be planning a couple of email blasts towards that towards the end of the month or around Black Friday, you actually need to speak about the whole month and even October prepping for that. And I'm going to come on to some tactics later on. The second one is around deliverability. So if you're working with a customer who has relatively poor deliverability, um, really like starting from today or tomorrow, you want to give them a call about how to like how to start working on improving their deliverability ahead of uh, November when you're going to be pumping out a whole bunch of, of, of emails. Um, does mention here and, and we know that it's okay to see a dip in deliverability during this season. It's just a known quantity with, with email. Uh, obviously, SMS doesn't see deliverability um, issues, but for email, everyone suffers deliverability issues. So it's kind of like the whole standard for deliverability drops um, with all the places you're sending to, all the inboxes you're sending to, uh, versus the regular time of year where, like, obviously, some people have a really great deliverability rating versus uh, other other providers. So ensuring that deliverability is looked after pre BFCM starting from now or before if you've got concerns, um, but also in the in the run up to that as well. Next one to think about is this content creation uh, calendar and mapping out for that month. And there's a calendar here, we provide it in the um, the partner portal um, content as well that we've got for you. This is a calendar of like the kind of uh, activities that we recommend that you should be um, working around. And you can see here, there's a lot more than just one email blast. There's a whole bunch uh, of different ideas, campaigns that you can be sending out to different segments at different points throughout the month. Um, and alignment across all your different platforms is, is super key. So one of the things that you could do starting from tomorrow is pick up the phone or send an email out to your um, to your customers and and pitch the idea of a content calendar to them, challenge them on their content calendar status today, and start to work with them on some ideas for content um, ASAP. Because realistically, you've got like two weeks to get this together um, and probably start creating content before you're going to need to start sending out your um, first messages from that in that first week. Number three, um, packaging. So we've talked about the talk tracks and we're gonna come on to the tactics, specific tactics later. This section covers like how we package up those talk tracks and tactics into service packages that you can talk to customers about. Um, so the first uh, one here, and. and this has been, if you haven't haven't taken advantage of it, probably our most useful uh, and it's been our most downloaded piece of content. And this is uh, our pricing and packaging workbook, which Rachel, if I'm not mistaken, please feel feel free to pipe up and um, yes, claim the I did off. build I did build that out for Clavio, correct? Yes, <laughs> Ra Rachel built this for Clavio, um, and it's honestly has been a, a like a revelation for so many of our partners so if you haven't taken advantage of it this is something that you should be diving into right away and taking a look at after this essentially it's about costing out your time and expenses to build profitable um, packages um, pricing packages for customers specifically around um specifically around bfcm so in this case, you can see like with email, we're talking about the content calendar and how, how are you billing that for the content calendar, the actual creation, the strategy and execution around that, and then testing. Um, and depending on the scope of your work, the number of um, hours you're putting into it, this might look wildly different. The point is this calculator will help you work it out, whether it's 
1,000 pound um, package or a 50,000 pound package, the calculator will help you make sure you're, you're selling profitable services to your customers. Couple of examples. So silver, gold, master package, um, copying the Clavio Parnetiers. So um, you can see here, it's like pretty basic. So for silver, uh, a relatively like entry level customer, helping them build their content calendar, getting their first 10 email and SMS campaign set up, some basic segmentation strategy. So this is taking a customer from like pretty much zero to getting their ducks in a row for a solid BFCM. <clears throat> and probably the first BFCM where they meaningfully measure their performance uh, on email. If they're not using SMS yet, um, why don't you give them 20% off your SMS setup package, which you've pre-priced using the pricing workbook. Uh, gold, so taking things to the next level, similar things from silver, but thinking about flow optimization, sign up form optimization. This is for those customers who are already doing the basics, but probably haven't got to grips with flows and automations yet, uh, taking them to the next level. And then master, again, building on that for slightly more advanced, uh, advanced customers, including testing, some reporting and analysis. Um, again, just, just helping customers to, to like, essentially each step of these packages is taking customers to the next level. So when you're thinking about your customer base, if you're doing an analysis, you might think, you know, today you might go through your list of customers and you'd say, right, this is who I can talk to about silver. This is who I can talk to about gold. And this is who I can talk about master based on their marketing um, maturity today. Um, and this, yeah, obviously these are examples. The workbook gives some, some more examples and then some of the tactics that we'll go on to and um, those talk tracks might inform exactly what's included in these packages. I guess one piece of feedback that's on here um, and, and isn't talked about enough is like, it's all very well having three packages, but if your business isn't set up to handle or doesn't have the skills maybe yet, or only has the skills, for example, to deliver a master package and you don't want to be dealing with um, silver tier customers, that's something you should be really thinking about as well. Do you actually want to service you know, a customer on silver, or do you really have the capabilities to serve a, serve a customer that might be interested in master? And so really making sure you're focusing on customers you can genuinely help and add value to. Um, creating uh, content pieces. Um, so how do you generate leads? So here's a few examples from, uh, from some technology partners. Um, like how do you generate leads? This is to be honest, it's probably a bit late in the day. This um, this deck we've been using for a couple of months now, but um, generating leads for your business now, um, Rachel could probably speak to it better than me, is now too late. I mean, it's never too late, realistically. You'll probably get someone on the 1st of November coming and telling you that they really need help for Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Um, those are more like the panic button customers, but um, I think you'd still get some reasonable, reasonably organized customers today but making sure you're set up to attract those customers. Is it advertising those BFCM packages on your website, creating a piece of YouTube content around um, your BFCM uh, packaging? So just thinking about how you put yourself out there, it's all very well creating these packages, spending the time working through the pricing and packaging workbook and the talk tracks that you're familiar with. But if you're not able to present those to customers, <clears throat> either through outreach or YouTube or your website um, or word of mouth, LinkedIn content, for example, then there's not a lot of point in them being there uh, otherwise. Um, I will just pause. I'm conscious I've been talking for a while and I need to drink some water, but does anyone have any questions on packaging, talk tracks before I go on to tactics? No, great. Either I've been really good or really bad is how I summarize <laughs> no questions, one or the other. No questions or feedback from anybody. I'd be interested to know just uh, in the slight pause, who has, is anybody here got specific BFCM, Clavia or email packages in place that they've been selling or they're building? No one? 
Well, everyone's got lots of work to do after this then. <laughs> That's great to hear. Brilliant. Uh, we do. Um, Jazz got some. Yeah, we got, a, we got, we got some, yeah. Um, kind of, I suppose, set up a little while ago, uh, um, obviously for obvious reasons, um, and pack it up pretty much like you're looking at there. Um, we're big fanboys and girls of Clavio over here, so uh, uh, we completely, uh, we go to town on anything we can do for with the Clavio side of things. Um, yeah, just interested to hear, did you use the uh, pricing and packaging workbook as well? I don't know, to be honest, James, um, but uh, our the stuff, the content that we, I, I do know what the prices are um, yeah. And, yeah. and what we offer, and they're suspiciously similar to them. Yeah. Um, so I maybe we did, maybe, um, but I, I wouldn't have been responsible for coming up with the pricing in the first place. Um, cool. But I wouldn't be surprised if we did. Good stuff. Yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. Question. All right. the ball for what it's worth. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'd be curious to get you know eyeballs if you guys have a bit of package. By the way, Jared over from the U.S., so not an EMEA. And we have, we have our own, you know, Clay being a partner manager, but we never sort of got a thought like prospectus on like, here's some campaigns in a box. So if there's stuff that you guys are doing overseas, I'd, I'd love to get the eyeballs. I mean, typically what we're doing around this is just increasing. So if their normal velocity is like two templates and X number of SMS, it's just like, okay, for the next two months, let's toss another 20, 30 hours on that. Um, but you know, if, if you guys have materials, and I just sent this to our marketing team, I was like, maybe this is, this is good for cross pollinating. Maybe this is the, the door. It's like, hey, you're not on a Clavio retainer with us yet, you know, but you we are maintaining your your e commerce. Like, we'll do this one off, right? And then maybe that gets people on retainers, which is, of course, all all any of us on this care about <laughs> is you know, five grand doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, five grand a month is good. Very good points, Jared. And I mean, I think, uh, like, obviously, depending on where you're, where you're based, there's probably a lot of appetite to share ideas on what's been working and not working, probably not on this call. But um, I think we spend uh, a lot of time, obviously, talking to different partners in different parts of the world, uh, and in similar parts of the world as well. And it's amazing the different like types of um, packages people come up with. I think one of the things that I've also seen and isn't talked about in this presentation is actually partners taking not just Clavio but other technology partners and weaving that into the services that they offer as well. So you've got like your basic Clavio set up, your BFCM Clavio set up, your Clavio and reviews.io set up and optimization, your Clavio and Nava shipping set up, your Clavio and insert. You know, we've got 250 technology partner integrations today. I mean, if you had two, 250 line items of Clavio services as like things that you could do, sure, don't advertise them all on your website because that's just like a little bit chaotic, but at least have them, you know, have the popular ones cataloged and you understand like what those services are, what the tactics are around those particular integrations so that when customers come to you and you maybe onboard them, like Jared said, with a very basic like Clavio get started package or Clavio optimization package. Once you find out a little bit more about their business, for example, they're using Clavio search, for example, integration that launched today with us. They're using Clavio search and Clavio. Oh, great. We can build in Clavio um, data points into your flows to provide like these outcomes and the analytics goes here and we'll build the dashboard for you in Clavio. Like those are like pretty incremental services that you can add to your base of customers uh, that you probably don't have today. Right, jumping into tactics. Uh, can you see my screen again? Yeah, we can. Awesome. So tactics starting with timing. So this talks about like what you should be doing when. So now we're in October. So this is basically now. Um, so if you're not doing for like all of those of you who didn't put your hand up when uh, Rachel said, are you doing any BFCM packages? 
these are a couple of things you can reach out to your clients about today. So are you focusing on deliverability? Are you doing consent uh, collection for email and SMS? Are you testing some offer strategies with small segments of your customers? Are you actually treating VIPs to um, early access to specific campaigns or like making them aware that they're going to get early access on the 1st of November versus, you know, the 15th of November, for example. And like we've talked about already, have you built the content calendar? Um, one of the specific tactics for this is obviously forms and collecting uh, more email and SMS consent. So a larger list means a larger reach and a larger reach means more opportunities for revenue, especially during this peak period where we generally see a much higher conversion rate uh, from like email and SMS sends to revenue just because propensity to buy is so much higher. But if your list isn't there, then or your list isn't isn't um, big enough, obviously you're never gonna see the same return as someone's list who's significantly larger. Making mobile a priority. So you can quickly clone forms to make sure they're ultra mobile friendly. This is really important if you're in the UK or have customers in the US and you're making sure that you want or ensuring that you get SMS con consent. Maybe you've got a two-step form, for example. For example, if you've got a mobile optimized um, pop-out pop -out or um, data collection form, you're much more likely to get the SMS consent um, as well as the email uh, from those customers on mobile. And uh, finally uh, here, turning email customers into SMS subscribers. And this is done um, through the form settings, uh, which you can find in, uh, in Clavio. And again, there's a whole bunch of content on this like SMS subscribers, multi-step forms in the partner portal. Uh, not going to bore you with going into the, into the details today. And then for your email subscribers where you know there is no SMS consent, which you can do through the segment builder. And there's an example here on the right. So when I send the deck, you can essentially copy and paste this. Inviting those email uh, subscribers to become SMS subscribers. As I mentioned earlier, SMS, if you're in the UK, uh, US, Canada, uh, Australia, and soon to be New Zealand, if, you're, um, if your customers are sending SMS to those regions or want to send SMS to those regions, SMS does not suffer from deliverability challenges and has a significantly higher open rate. So like if you pair that with the high propensity to buy during this period, you're setting yourself up for um, for much higher um, conversion rates and revenue generation from SMS than potentially email as well. And if you're combining the two, you're obviously putting yourselves in a, yourselves and your customers in a really strong position to see success. Looking at uh, November. So, <clears throat> excuse me, November, which is obviously during BFCM peak period, this is the time to be generating uh, sales. As we've seen, major retailers announce this earlier and earlier and earlier. So some are doing some are doing half the whole week, depending on where you are. Uh, American businesses more likely to do a, a much longer period. The Nordics, for example, and parts of Eastern Europe far far less likely. Um, making sure this is, is when you send your early access potentially to VIPs or maybe your uh, entire customer base. It's where you're going to really um, start to knock into your deliverability just because you do need to send uh, a relatively high volume of messages to, to get through the noise. Um, and just with the different um, content pieces that you want to build surrounding this, you should have a pretty good reason to send large number of messages like ramp up to early access. Early access goes ahead. Uh, like access for all of your customers, um, you know, price drop happening on certain dates, for example. Um, this is the this is a, a key period for, for action. And to support this, obviously, you've got the, the content calendar to help you map out like, yeah, we're sending a whole lot of messages, but we're not just sending campaigns to every single customer. We seg segment this out and you can see the segments on the top left here. So like 
30 day engaged customers get X number of emails, VIPs get a set list of emails, the full list gets actually a relatively low number of emails uh, out, of the, out of the whole um, portion of like sending here. And that's because if we're just bombarding our full list, we'll absolutely smash our deliverability to the ground and probably start missing out on, um, on reaching the inbox later in the month, <clears throat> which is when it will really count. SMS sending, um, making sure that this is well planned out uh, for um, Christmas. So obviously you wanna make sure that people get their packages for Christmas, like expectation setting is really important during this time of year. So in this uh, example here, we're planning out like when you need to buy, um, when you need to buy to get, get delivery before Christmas, uh, and essentially reminders around that Christmas greetings um, and then thinking about campaigns that um, that are going to hit for for January uh, New Year's. So in here we've actually like scheduling days with customers um, to think about those uh, those campaigns. And December, uh, keeping up the the momentum, obviously to keep up with the demand uh, for gift buying and sending sending gifts to, to uh, family and friends. Um, you want to keep uh, you want to keep the focus on on um, repairing deliverability. So understanding data, um, who like who's actually been interacting with your emails. Did some of your unengaged audience actually become active? And do you need to, obviously you want to make sure that those customers are falling into dynamic segments where they're gonna be placed in the active active segments and customers that are still continuing to be um, inactive or non-engaging are moved into inactive seg segments and you're not just continuing to bombard them during like what still is a heavy sending period because that's where you'll just have to spend so much time in January potentially repairing deliverability or experiencing deliverability issues that mean like your January sales, um, if you're doing them, if the customer is doing them, might be heavily affected. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, back in stock alerts, both email and SMS, uh, very important that um, these flows are active, especially during this period. You'll have people wanting to get products um, out to their friends and family or to their homes as gifts. And those products will probably fluctuate in stock. Some, some brands will buy enough stock for the season and that'll be done. Some will be receiving stock mid, uh, mid November and through December. So back in stock, uh, back in stock alerts we've seen since we launched them uh, way back have been a huge value driver for merchants to generate incremental sales not just through this period, but uh, consistently. Really, it should be an evergreen flow, but now might be the time to prompt uh, a customer to invest in, in you building this for them. Uh, transactional notifications. Um, this is more around like making sure you set up messages, flows, automations uh, to ensure customers get timely messages about orders shipped, um, orders delivered, estimates, like all the all the key um, all the key things that we kind of now expect from uh, from online retailers. Um, this is a bit of a call out to what I was saying earlier about um, working with integration partners and the data points that can be used to trigger flows or um, variables within um, messages. And uh, so this one, this example is referencing shipping, but um, mentions the directory at the bottom there. This could be calling out to, to um, a whole bunch of different um, data points. And uh, post-purchase journeys. So what's happened when someone's bought? Is this reminding someone that they've got loyalty points, asking them for a review? Uh, what are the opportunities here? It might be referring a friend. Again, this is speaking to like our directory of third party integrations. <clears throat> I can think of, you know, you've just, you've just, um, ramped up your subscriber base massively over the last uh, couple of months. Um, and just through um, the Black Friday period, you're probably gonna see a lot of net new customers coming to the site. Using those to um, 
using those new customers and helping to enroll them in loyalty programs, referral programs. And these are the kind of technology conversations you can bring up with your customers as well. Um, it might not be that this is for right now if they don't have those technologies, but it might be a January conversation like, hey, this was a successful Black Friday, Cyber Monday. We can make this even more successful and are like following year successful by implementing technologies like reviews, like referrals, like loyalty, for example. And then you've got the, the service led offerings that come off the back of those integrations being installed. Um, failure to launch. So I think this is, this is something that um, I think most of us will hopefully be aware of, but don't, don't forget to put it in place. And this is a welcome series. So like I said, there's just a bunch of net new customers coming to your brands over this period. Again, just because we see such high volumes of, of uh, customers purchasing. And if you're not introducing those to your brand, um, you know, a lot of them aren't going to buy, but they probably are going to come to the site, abandon carts or sign up for newsletters. If you're not in introducing them to your brand pro properly, they're not the kind of subscribers that you're going to be able to reactivate, you know, early to mid year 2023. Whereas if you put the time and en energy into um, a really articular um, brand story, welcome orientated welcome series, you're much more likely to have them as a as a customer that you can actually engage with uh, further down the line. So a couple of actions that you should be thinking about with customers. Don't be afraid of your main lists. This is one of the few times of the year when you do want to be sending to your whole list with campaigns. It's where you're going to have the biggest reach, the biggest opportunities for revenue <coughs> tied and paired or paired with this high propensity to to buy. Keep an eye on deliverability, but don't uh, don't hang on. Like don't don't get too hung up on it deliver on it um, dropping. If you do see one campaign or a couple of campaigns with very poor performance, don't forget to adjust the audience so that you're not continuing to to smash that scoring. Um, be prepared for early releases. Uh, rotate audiences which ties into the deliverability context uh, and treat early December like BFCM. So those last couple of weeks of November and early December are really, um, are really the all one period. Obviously it starts to taper off through December and uh, early, uh, early November is when things start to ramp up. Uh, but yeah, early December, don't neglect it just because you put all your calories into the end of November. Couple of tips on audiences, three main ones. You got your main, uh, your main list. Just remember to suppress suppress a couple of key profiles listed there. You've got your L30, you know, your last clicked or opened an email in your last 30 days. And you've got your VIPs. These are probably going to be driving a huge portion of your revenue during this period. So making sure you have a really dialed in content strategy for engaging with those. Some additional um, considerations. You might want to re try and re-engage purchases from the previous BFCM. Maybe they've just not engaged last year. It might be because your site's more gifting orientated or for whatever reason, they've just only bought once. They might want to buy a similar gift from the same retailer the next year. If you're like me and you're lazy, that's probably what you do. Looking at slightly longer periods <coughs> for engaged customers. So last interacted in 60 to 180 days. But this might be a segment that you might drill down on, uh, like as you get into um, late, uh, late November. Looking at window shoppers, so subscribers who've viewed multiple products but haven't made a purchase in the last few months. And then upsell candidates. But so customers who've purchased products, probably not gifting, but maybe bought you know, a pair of trousers and might be interested in t-shirts and jumpers, for example. So where they've invested in one product, they might be might might have been particularly happy with, but just haven't come back yet. Again, now's the time. And of course, plenty of other creative ideas that I'm sure so many of you have come up with. I think this is the final section, but um, messaging. So you've got your transactional messaging, your brand attributes, 
your influence attributes and your functional attributes. There are a couple of different ways to speak to customers. Transactions are very much like you get free shipping, 10% off, gift with purchase, tier discount. This is essentially your buy now, do it now, or you're missing out. Um, and these, these are the messages that you'll probably reserve for uh, the last um, couple of sends uh, towards the end of the month, or at least you'll be making people aware that this might be coming, but you'll definitely want to re um, reinstill that message when once these discounts or um, free shipping become available. Brand attributes. So um, I always think about Patagonia in this example, like just telling people your story. And this is particularly prevalent in like welcome series. So when you get that first sign up in the welcome, uh, welcome series, making sure that your brand attributes are uh, really heavily um, interwoven in that, in that welcome series. And then uh, influence attributes, so reviews, UGC, video testimonials. This again might be woven into the welcome series. It might be woven into those customers who have made purchase or have um, been active on site or uh, window shopping customers that just need <coughs> convincing that now's the right time and your 500 uh, five-star reviews for this jacket are a reason to buy it for your um, much loved family member. And then finally, functional attributes. So like back in stock or um, abandoned cart flows, this is where you should be thinking about how you sell the value of the particular product that a customer is interested in. Um, here we talk about warmth, waterproof, again, in the, with the jacket context. And then some transactional messaging. Um, so time, sen time, time sensitive, last day of the month, uh, discounts, um, and then X percent off a couple of examples here of some templates. And then a uh, quick summary here. So improving 22 messaging strategy, testing different offers and USPs leading up to the side weekend. Still got plenty of time to do that, especially with smaller cohorts of customers. You want to have multiple offers ready. You know, you might have a, a campaign ready to go for a slightly higher discount, um, or you might want to advise a, sl a slightly higher discount campaign that if the 10% discount doesn't have the desired revenue impact, two days later, you might want to offer the, the 25 or the 15 or whatever the incremental increase might be to that. Uh, mix offer types with different audience types, you know, your VIPs um, versus your, you know, lapsed 180 day customers. Uh, those might get very different offers. Um, just remember, if you are segmenting offers, make sure that you do not send a campaign to your whole audience with a particular offer that is better than, uh, you know, a segmented or, or worse than a segmented campaign, uh, one way or another, I'm confusing myself there. Otherwise, you might end up with some pretty pissed off customers, especially if they buy on the first offer uh, and then something significantly better gets sent their way um, just a few days later. Use data from e -com platform, mostly like conversion data, engagement data, um, active on site data to determine what work, what's working, what's bringing customers to your store, what's causing customers to look at lots of product, put product in the basket, and just what's not resonating with customers. Um, and remember, average discount is actually ding, uh, average discount is decreasing and has been decreasing over the last few years, where sales have been increasing. Personally, I think it'll be interesting to see if this dynamic changes with the macroeconomic climate. Um, but let's let's see what happens. I'm not going to put too many bets, oh, like personal bets, on that in with this audience today. Thank you. That's it from me. Don't scan the QR code because I don't actually know what it does. Um, and if you do scan it, let me know what it does. Uh, I've been James. We've been Clavio. These have been tips. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to shout. Shout out now. That was great, James. Thanks for that. Lots of content. Sorry. I feel like those are a bit of like just throwing things at people, but hopefully some of it's useful. Some of it's not. Um, and you can take out what you want from it. Yeah. Sean, you go ahead. We've got a question. 
James, I apologize. I was uh, crazy late. Is there <laughs> any possibility that we can see this presentation? Um, yes. I don't know. I guess I guess Rachel recorded it for us. I recorded it, and oh. I have the slides from James anyway. I think there's an additional uh, resource, so I'll, I will send it right after, and it will go up on YouTube. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you both. There'll be a bunch of resources, and you can also um, – I think the bit you missed right at the start, Sean, was that this is on the partner portal and there's a couple of learning resources as well. So there's, yeah, everything I've talked about today is available in like a more long form, uh, long form content uh, through our partner portal. Awesome, thank you. No problem. I'd be interested to ask some questions for the people in the group that are actively doing, I, I know who most of them are, the people that are actively doing Clavio, people like Jason, Lucas, Gustavo, who else have we got? Um, Carol, no, not, not property. Carol, you're not doing much uh, yet. I don't think so. Uh, anyway, for the people that are doing Canadian, what sort of questions um, are you planning ahead for Black Friday right now? Are your merchants coming to you and asking for that, or have you been proactive? Anyone can answer who's doing Clavio. <laughs> For sure. What I can say for us specifically, we're not doing like that much for Clave at the moment. So we're trying to ramp up like this offering. So creating all that, I think one of the things that was super valuable that James were mentioning is this like combination of different setups and different packages with other offerings. So like combining the Clave with the Black Friday campaign, uh, Black Friday strategy or with other partners as well, because we do a lot of like reviews. Sometimes there are loyalty programs that they want to integrate. So like having already those those things set and we're already prepared, especially the, the Black Friday one, I think is super valuable. And it's one of the things that we're not we're not going crazy yet. And we know they were like late for it, <laughs> but we definitely will. It's never too late. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's kind of a threat. I will give you a link to the partner portal now for the person that's just asked in the chat. Uh... Jason, what about for you guys? You, um, Ballistic Agency is pretty heavy on um, Clavio. I'm assuming that you guys are working ahead. I don't think Jason can hear me or he's on mute. Maybe he doesn't know he's on mute. Any other questions for James? James is the expert. I'm not the expert, to be honest. I'm a conveyor of expertise. <laughs> okay but um i'm fortunate to have some wonderful team members who who most definitely are experts what i've put um jason's car isn't working with bluetooth love it nice. listening okay. to this while driving i'm not sure we can advocate for that but we can definitely enjoy it uh, i've just put two things in the chat one is the link to the partner portal if you are already a partner if you are not a partner you can sign up with the bottom link, which is clavio.com forward slash partners forward slash become <laughs> hands free, no hands on the wheel. Nice. Love it. Uh, clavio.com forward slash partners become a partner. So you sign up there. Uh, you'll get access within a couple of days maximum. Uh, you'll also get 90 days partner onboarding and you'll get access to the part portal, which someone will talk you through as part of your onboarding. If you are a partner, log in partners.clavio.com. And if you're having any problems accessing the partner portal, um, you can uh, reach out to partners at clavio.com for support with that. But just forget your password normally and that will get you back in. Okay, perfect. Well, this was great. What I'm going to do is upload or get set to upload the recording and share the link around. Um, awesome. That was that it was jam packed full of lots of valuable content. So I'm sure there were loads of notes taken that people will be implementing. One thing I would say about when it comes to Black Friday and Playview, I feel like it's the easiest sell this time of year. And really, I mean, we're in October now, so it's not too late, but it's almost too late if you don't get it in by the end of this month. Good luck. Um, but I would say that for next year, you should probably put it in your calendars now that towards the end of August, you need to start prepping for September. So the agencies that I work with that are Clavio specific or exclusive to Clavio, that's the only service they offer. They actually get all of their Black Friday, Cyber Monday stuff done by the end of September at the absolute latest. 
So they're working in August and September to get everything squared away because it is so hectic. So it means that any of those crazy last minute flurry of people coming in being like, holy fuck, I need to get this sorted. They then have about a month to, you know, get kick those into, into gear pretty quickly. Um, but it's an easy, it's such an easy sale. There are so many people so easy to get in the door. Um, it is a, an easy service to offer. The, the other, um, you know, I took, there's the talk track, um, section in, in, in that deck, which you'll obviously all can get hold of the one talk track that you can actually use now, which if you haven't, if it's like for a customer that hasn't got started with this today, or you haven't talked to them about yet, that's like every day you wait now is revenue you're leaving on the table. So this is why you should be, you know, creating a sense of urgency in your sales process to get one of your customers or a prospect signed up to a package or thinking or you to think about a package with them or thinking about services with them. The time to do that is now. And the reason is every day you don't do this is revenue that you're leaving on the table. Mm -hmm. For me, I almost say agencies doing email marketing or doing Clavio, it's just you're printing money for your clients. <laughs> I mean, it, it really it really is an, an immediate ROI. Um, so it's not that you can't fuck it up, but it's really hard to do. <laughs> you're, you're gonna do a better job when people are not doing it. Alex, to answer your question specifically, can I get re-enabled and sign a while ago? Yeah, absolutely. Like James said, just go on the partner portal and say that you forgot your password. Um, and if yeah. it's you're not because you you guys changed the portal earlier this year yeah. so there were some there were some issues with email addresses on the old portal and new portal so there may be an issue there and if that's the case just resign or sign back up again yeah and alex like i said if you do if you do that you forget your password and you still can't get in partners i'll put it in here partners at clavio.com uh, email that address tell them you've had trouble with getting into your and one of the team will get it sorted for you. Yeah. But the easiest way to do it is that like the first thing they'll tell you to do is forget password and try again. So do that first before you reach out. Okay. What well, I'm going to fuck. I'm going to put this in an email recap. Um, just like copy and pasting all of these uh, links. So everybody has it. Awesome. Um, well, look, thank, thank you everyone for spending the time on this call. Hopefully it was useful and the content was useful. Thank you, Rachel, for having Fabio, myself um, here. And if there's any questions, like I said, follow up um, with partners at Clavio, your partner manager, the partner portal, uh, Rachel or I directly. And we'll uh, wishing you all a fruitful next couple of months uh, and obviously your customers as well. Awesome. Thanks, Emil, James. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Yes. Ciao.